Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for coming today. Today we're going to talk about air gap and immunability. I have with me Andrew Stamworthy, Technical Account Manager in charge of WIM. And my name is Mota Masabi. Together we're going to explain what air gap and immunity is and what it can do for you. He's going to, about, he's going to talk about WIM and what WIM has done and I'm going to talk about how Stonefly can help you with its appliance, which we call the Stonefly Air Gap and DR. Take it away, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks for the intro, Mo. My name is Andrew Stomworthy, and I'm a technical account manager specializing in Veeam. Today, we're going to talk briefly about how Veeam can help protect your data from attacks such as ransomware and other malicious attackers, and specifically how Veeam can help create air gapped and air gapped like backups. Then we'll talk about Stonefly's Veeam Ready Appliance and how it implements and even improves upon these capabilities. Backups are an integral part in ensuring your data is protected and your business can continue in the event of a disaster. Whether you're impacted by some kind of natural disaster, large or small, or some kind of man-made disaster, a malicious attacker, or ransomware that prevents you from accessing your data, a backup means that you can recover and continue your business. Now, ransomware continues to become more advanced and can access, encrypt, and even delete your backups, preventing you from using those backups to recover your business. The only way to prevent this kind of attack is an air-gapped backup. Now, an air-gap usually means a physical separation of the system uh, from the network, literally a gap of air between that system and anything else. This prevents malicious attacks from accessing this data in the event of a breach. Of course, best practice is to have at least one copy of your backups offline and air-gapped to fall back to if needed. Now, Veeam supports conventional air-gapped storage, as well as some newer technologies that provide the same level of protection, but with some added benefits. So let's take a look at some different types of resilient backups, we'll call them. The most well-known air-gapped backup is the tried-and-true tape backup, but we also have many others including replicated virtual machines, using storage snapshots, Veeam Cloud Connect backups, rotated hard drives, very similar to a tape backup with different technology, and our newest technology, immutability. We're going to take a look at some of these in more detail, and then we'll talk about how Stonefly's Veeam Ready Appliance implements and expands on these capabilities. The most common form of air-gapped backup is the old-fashioned tape backup. Veeam supports any drives, LTO3 and newer, from just about any vendor. Backing up to tape is a tried and true method for long-term offline air gap storage of your backups. It can be relatively cost effective with tapes being inexpensive, and it is completely air gapped. Once that tape is removed from the drive, it can no longer be accessed. However, this leads to a major limitation of tape drives. Accessibility. In the event that we need to recover data from our tapes, we first need to obtain the physical tape media, put it back into our tape drive, rehydrate the data, and then we can begin the recovery process. This can lead to a very long recovery time and therefore a long outage of our business. Some of our newer technologies that we're going to talk about can accomplish the same level of protection, but provide us more accessibility to our data. Similar to a tape drive backup, we can use a rotated hard drive system, something like RDX or maybe just a series of USB drives that someone takes home every night. And this can be a good uh, alternative to tape for some smaller customers who maybe don't want to invest in an expensive tape drive, uh, even though the tapes themselves might be cheaper, more cost effective than something like an external hard drive. Uh, but we still have the issue of needing to retrieve our physical media to begin the restoration process. And we now have the added complication of ensuring that our drives are manually removed and stored. In addition, this method can use additional space as Veeam works to ensure that our backup chains are never broken, so more frequent full backups may be necessary. You can see in the little example here, we've done a full backup on Sunday for external drive one with an incremental the next day, and then we've rotated our drives. Uh, Veeam recognizes that the first drive is no longer there, and instead of creating another incremental, which would be broken, uh, we create another full backup. So we're doing more full backups on this system. Another option for air-gapped backups is to use a Veeam Cloud Connect provider. 
These are service providers who offer backup as a service using their own data center uh, as an offsite backup target. This can also use a different authentication system than your primary network. That way, if something gains access to your data on your primary network, it might still not be able to access this data. Cloud Connect providers also have the ability to enable insider protection. This is a functionality that protects backups from being fully deleted for some period of time. In the event some malicious attack deletes these backups, they can still be recovered by the service provider during that period. And a Veeam Cloud Connect provider can also be a provider of other air-gapped options, some of the ones we've already talked about and some of the ones we're yet to talk about. And one of the primary benefits of using a Cloud Connect provider is that your data is still accessible, where the tape drives and rotated media that we talked about earlier does not provide you that functionality. Having it on a Cloud Connect provider means that you can still access that data when you need it. One additional benefit is that Cloud Connect providers can offer replication as a service. This means that they offer up some of their virtual host space so that you can replicate your virtual machines and run your machines there in the event of a disaster. Finally, we have immutability. This is a setting that allows us to protect our data from any kind of modification or deletion during a set period of time. This ensures that even if some kind of attack attempts to encrypt, access, alter, or delete your data, it simply will not have the capability. And while this is not truly an air gap solution because your data is still accessible, it does serve the same purpose as an air gap and it prevents the data from being deleted or changed. So we get the benefit of an air gap without the downsides of an air gap. And this is an option on many public cloud options, such as Amazon S3 or any S3 compatible uh, offsite storage, as well as some on-prem storage that uses the same S3 compatibility. And this is something the Stonefly appliance utilizes to give you an air-gapped immutable backup. The way we implement this immutability is on the scale-out backup repository and the cloud tier. Scale-out backup repository allows us to take some kind of direct attach, network attached, or dedupe appliance storage, pool it into our performance tier, and then offload our backups, whether they're the oldest ones or an immediate copy to our capacity or cloud tier. If we want to have this immutability, we simply check the box and enable it in the backup settings. And it has to go to Amazon S3 or any S3 compatible bucket with object lock support. Again, this is something that Stonefly's appliance uh, allows you to do on-prem. And so this gives us uh, the benefits of an air gap in that some kind of malicious attack cannot access our data and delete it, but it eliminates the shortcomings of an air gap in that we have direct access to our data. In the event that we need to recover our data or recover from some kind of failure, we can immediately access that data and begin that process without having to wait for some kind of rehydration or pulling data back to our main data center. We can get started right away. Great, I think that's all I had for today. I'll hand it back to Mo to talk in greater detail about how Stonefly's Veeam Ready appliance and solution implement and extend Veeam's air gap and air gap like capabilities while offering a scalable, highly available turnkey appliance. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Andrew, for a nice presentation. It was very informative. Now I'm gonna talk about Stonefly for a one minute and then um, the backgrounder and then we can move to the appliance. Um, we started in year 2000, we kind of were tired of seeing direct that storage which was not very effective, very efficient and very expensive. And the alternative to that also is more expensive which was um, Fiber Channel. So we worked on a protocol called ISCSI and we introduced the first product in 2002. Of course we registered the domain first because we thought ISCSI is going to be big. And if you go to uh, ISCSI.com you go to Stonefly. 
or we have a diverse number of customers across the industry, government, in the, you know, mostly high-tech industries, pharmaceuticals, uh, legals, and so on and so forth. And you can see a big list of them, over a few thousand. Uh, we are focused on the storage, hyperconverged appliance, backup, and disaster recovery. We are a, basically, you can say that we are very focused on storage and whatever that you have to store the data, you have to manage data, you have to protect the data, uh, you have to migrate data, whatever you have to do with the data, we are there. So um, I'm going to talk about um, the implementation most of the people have uh, with um, uh, Veeam appliance. So the way it is mostly is that you have a number of uh, servers being virtual or physical uh, ver uh, servers, VMware, Hyper-V, and then uh, you have maybe a management which manages all these guys and then you have a Veeam backup server. And that's a typical uh, configuration most of people have. And some of other people have instead of having the drives being uh, directly underneath or as part of the backup appliance, they have it as a network connection as being a SAN or a NAS. Uh, the problem with this type of uh, uh, you know configuration is that uh, you uh, mostly have the windows here and then you have Veeam on the on this appliance and the storage is uh, directly exposed to the windows itself and windows itself is uh, network facing and so it's pretty exposed uh, since it's sitting on your LAN and it's connected pretty much to everybody because it has to back pretty much everybody on the network and as part of that, you uh, are pretty exposed once they get into the Veeam, which is Windows, and they are there is no real defense uh, at that point, and you get to the hard drives, and uh, you're gonna encrypt it. So now we have to think about, first of all, not having it as much uh, be network in, uh, facing, but also, Immunability and air gap means we separate the storage from uh, uh, from the Veeam um, uh, uh, engine itself uh, somehow, and uh, not being directly exposed to Windows, which is in this case it is, and in this case also it is. So both cases are fatal, and those are cases. This this is the typical thing that every day we we see customer who calls us and they already compromised and. Um, you know, this is the configuration, probably 90 some percent, 95, 98 percent of the people uh, implement today. Uh, and that is the mostly the cause of a lot of problems. So now we're going to talk about the plans, how we might solve the problem and uh, be able to help you. Let's start with the concept that everybody pretty much knows, which is three to one, which is three copies of the data, two different medias and one offsite. We also have added another uh, one and zero to it, which is one air-gapped or immunable, uh, at least one um, on-prem uh, or cloud, but you know both if it's possible, and then zero errors means that we want to basically verify and be able to recover, and that's also important because if you have corruption or other things and you cannot recover, you know it's not going to be a good backup. So here you go, the uh, big appliance, uh, which is, uh, you know, feels confusing, sounds confusing, you know, and uh, yeah, it is confusing. We call it the DR365V air gap architecture. And it is good to be confusing. Why? Because we want to make it as difficult and confusing as possible for people who are going to attack these appliances, the more confusing and uh, the more complicated it sounds or feels, the better it is, and hopefully they stay away from it. And um, that's the goal of uh, any kind of backup appliance, not only the backing up your uh, data and protecting it uh, as far as you know any kind of um, uh, hardware failure, but these days it mostly has to do with uh, attacks of being ransomware, viruses, and malwares and internal attacks, external attacks, hackers, whatever. You know, it's like everybody's after your data one way or another. So we are going to make it as difficult as possible for them 
to get to your data. So that's our purpose of not only protecting against any hardware failures or any kind of disaster, but also against everybody who uh, is going to have malicious uh, intent. Uh, and um, so here we go. So I'm gonna explain uh, different modules in this uh, product. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, post your questions and we'll get your question as soon as we can. Thank you. Um, here we start on the uh, left-hand side. This is your infrastructure, basically, that we had. Um, it's your uh, virtual uh, servers being uh, VMware Hyper-V. And then uh, this is uh, your management being um, vCenter or System Center. This is your physical units and they're connected to a switch. And from there, uh, they are connected to uh, our Veeam appliance, which is the, the R365 Veeam. And uh, so when the traffic comes here, it hits um, our Veeam first because the Veeam is your backup engine. We also have data movers in this appliance. Data movers are in charge of uh, you know, taking the data, which uh, our Veeam engine distributes among these data movers, and uh, these data movers are executing the job uh, for Veeam itself, for the main engine. And then um, this will help you to increase the performance and uh, kind of scale the performance as you need the performance and uh, it shortens your backup windows. And uh, so that, that helps you in performance, but at the same time, uh, at this time, uh, we, we sit in front of our, uh, basically our storage stack because we are trying to make sure our storage stack now uh, is not um, network facing uh, because in between that is the switch uh, that protects us because uh, Veeam has to go to our internal switch and our internal switch, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, something that, uh, you know, it's uh, going to protect us because at this point, we start doing what's called secret key communication between the Veeam stack and our storage stack. So any um, communications uh, that is going to happen between our Veeam instant and uh, our um, uh, storage stack has to go through that uh, secret communication. And after that, we also do traffic shaping, means we you know, look at some of the traffic and make sure it comes with um, uh, you know, destinations and source and all that kind of things, and it has a, uh, right formats and right fields. And once, once it's, um, you know, it gets to all that and it gets to our storage stack, which as I told you, is not a network facing in the other situations that you might have Veeam server, uh, your uh, storage directly is, um, you know, exposed because your Veeam instant, uh, you know, it's under Veeam and is directly uh, attached to your Veeam as a as a direct storage. Here is uh, we are going through our network, as, as, uh, you know, su suffered from network, and then it gets to our storage stack. We exposed our um, after uh, the you know the Veeam be able to. Um, you know, access our storage, uh, we, it goes to, uh, uh, you know, we present it as a SAN and NAS and object storage, so three type of storage. Uh, the SAN storage, because it's a block mode storage and uh, Veeam uses a lot of data uh, bases and so it's on st it's a structured databases. So all this structured um, data that we deal with uh, goes to our uh, SAN system, block mode system, which can handle a lot of IOPS, so high, high performance IOPS. Uh, engine and then it goes, uh, the rest of it uh, can be used on the, uh, these two t other tiers, which is the file mode system, which is our NAS unit. And then the, the last one is object, uh, the object tier, which is the S3 cloud native. So it's like um, having the Amazon cloud uh, as a local uh, tier of storage in your uh, plants. Now, from the uh, start from the, the the last one, which is object storage. At uh, this time, we introduce the concept of immutability, because there is three uh, the type of um, uh, repository. Basically, we create with our controllers. Uh, one is called regular repository. There's the other one is immutable repository. The other one is air gapped and immutable repository. So there's three type of repository, which I explain exactly what they're purpose of them are. Uh, 
Uh, on the object storage, we uh, create uh, both uh, regular and immutable repositories and also air gap repositories, uh, immutable uh, repositories. So uh, the immutable repositories is a directly integrated as uh, you know can be used as part of the Veeam when you are uh, creating a job, you can actually um, uh, create policy for it, for retention policy for days, months, years. Uh, how long you're gonna you're gonna make it immutable means you cannot uh, it cannot be deleted or modified, and so it stays the same thing for days, weeks, months, whatever you assign that immutability at uh, when you create the job itself. So directly you can uh, create that immutability within ob object storage. You know so so. Any job that you do for backup or um, archive, you can uh, use that um, that capability. We call it object lockdown. So it supports object lockdown um, as part of the uh, integration with the with the Veeam. Uh, and then the next immutability comes in our file-based system, which is called NAS unit. And at this time, we uh, create the Vault system. The Vault uh, is immutable vault and it's uh, warm, which is the uh, right one read many times. And uh, at that point, you also can um, uh, create policy, which is basically tells it it cannot be deleted for X amount of days, months, years. And uh, at that point, uh, uh, you know you can place a copy uh, of the backup after it's clean. Is uh, uh, verified into the vault and then it gets locked into the vault. So whenever you check in any kind of uh, your backup or files that you need to check into the vault, at that point that policy applies to uh, that uh, particular file or that particular backup that you have and it uh, creates that policy for whatever you set it to be days, months, and years. And it's not deletable, it's not modifiable. So that's a second uh, immutability within our storage tier. We also have uh, uh, snapshot immutability capability in this appliance, which we take on uh, regular scheduled uh, uh, immutable backup, which is read-only. And uh, it's not deletable and uh, it's not modifiable. And that is like a you know time machine quick uh, way of uh, retrieving and uh, dialing back in time. If there anything happens to uh, this appliance or the data or uh, any encryption happens, you can just simply dial back, uh, you know, a few hours, few days, and then, uh, you know, quickly recover uh, from that. So now we had three types of immutability built into this appliance, uh, and uh, one was object lockdown, the other one was warm volume in the NAS, and then immutable, uh, the, you know, snapshot, which we have from the, uh, of getting from the appliance. Now, the fourth one is actually anti-ransomware that is a policy base that we use in this appliance. Also, you can schedule that, and then it would run and make sure when the uh, backup lands on this appliance, it's clean, it's nice, and doesn't have any kind of embedded ransomware or any signature that um, you know we see that uh, it's uh, suspect uh, to be uh, uh, ransomware or viruses or malwares. So now we have these four different things uh, that uh, we implement, uh, you know, for customers. Um, we also have um, air gap system. We call uh, it's uh, within the controller itself. It's called air gap immuno repository. That air gap immuno repository is a secondary repository within the controller itself. So if you need to, uh, you know, create that, uh, you can and. The difference between the air gapped immunable and regular uh, immunable uh, is that uh, air gap is doesn't have any connection to outside. It's fully isolated, and the only connection it has is uh, basically through a special protocol that we use to write to it. And uh, so after that. Uh, it's uh, read-only. It's there is nothing you can do with that, and it's, there is no network connections. There is no network facing, so no, there is no access to that particular repository. So within that controller, we create an isolated repository, basically. That's called air-gapped immutable uh, repository. So you can either do it air-gapped uh, repository, or you can do air-gapped and immutable repository both at the same time. 
But usually people, uh, they create immunability within the first, you know, uh, you know the, these three uh, tier of storage and then you know one air gap within the controller itself if they uh, choose to. Now beside that we have a second controller within appliance which is a policy based uh, controller and it's an optional controller. That controller uh, is air gap controller means the controller itself is isolated and it's not, it doesn't have any network facing, it's not connected to anything. And the only way it gets connected to, uh, to the data that we have for, for writes is that through a special protocol that's between the first controller and the second controller. And uh, it's encrypted, it's tunneled, uh, so it's protected, the communication is protected. And the protocol is only known to these two controllers and they establish the tunnel and that. Uh, per policy that we uh, choose and then uh, the data gets transferred to a second controller and also second controller uh, you can create as a regular repository immutable repository you know and air gap or nested air gap repository and immutable in the in the second controller and the second controller is uh, you know being like a, you know a removable uh, unit that you know when it's there you can also uh, disable it or we call it um, deactivate it and deactivation means uh, you know it's just like taking uh, out like a USB drive or uh, uh, basic tape backup out from the appliance it's completely disappears and so it uh, you know uh, after you place the copy you can deactivate it and it doesn't exist anymore as far as um, uh, you know being um, uh, active controller so um, and uh, so these controllers are optional is available to you. Uh, we also use uh, multi-factor authentication for accessibility to these stories, and uh, you know we use FIDO2 con the capability, or uh, we use uh, you know uh, you know the Google authentications if you want multi-factor authentication. So um, and on the first controller. Uh, you can have different users than you have on second controller or more restrictive controller on uh, users on the second controller and uh, even you have the, the, maybe the same uh, people uh, have access to both controllers uh, they uh, their you know the credentials could be different so uh, if they get compromised on one set of current credentials they have then they would be safe on the second one um, we also have um, capability to protect these guys uh, with the three external capability that we have. These are internal that would be talked to the appliance. So it's part of the appliance when you buy it, you, uh, you know, either make it uh, as part of the first purchase or it's optional, then you can uh, enable it as uh, you, you deploy or you require more of these options to be deployed. Um, so a quick review on this appliance. We have two controllers in this appliances. Uh, one, the first controller, we use it for active production controller. The second controller, we use it for uh, air gap controller. Uh, within the controller itself, uh, we have objects. We have a file-based system. We have a SAN iSCSI SAN-based system. And uh, within these uh, the tiers of storage, we have immutability. So the first one is object lockdown. The second one is in the warm volume in the NAS. Then we have a snapshot, you know, uh, immutable snapshot capability. And also we have uh, ransomware uh, protection, which runs on these appliances. Uh, so these are some of the, the immutability. And then we have air gap uh, per appliance. We have air gap within the appliance itself. We call it uh, air gap immutable or air gap repository which is the, associated with the controller we also have the second controller as a as an air gap controller and within the controller then you have air gap repository as well so you can have nested so it gets as you go it's more it's like having more doors and they have to break in through more doors and more doors and more doors so you can create a really uh, difficult situation for somebody to basically get uh, to your data and uh, you know uh, access your data and uh, it depends how how far do you want to go okay so now that's the first layer is within our appliance uh, the second layer in the in is, is actually external 
uh, to this appliance and that has um, its uh, number one is a hardware key uh, which is uh, basically uh, as part of multi-factor authentication you can also uh, say you know you should enable uh, you know any kind of access with actually physical keys so if you decide to do that we can provide that to you uh, this key is uh, is um, compatible with most of the security uh, authentications um, you know as I said uh, FIDO2 is one of them and uh, Google authentication or Authent2 is part of the protocol we support uh, and contact your cells if uh, you want to see that we support uh, any other packages that you might be using in your facilities and also the next one up after that is external air gap uh, uh, repositories uh, which you can purchase from us that's also is a policy-based activation controller uh, it comes online I guess activated and then uh, it would take your data then basically it gets deactivated it's very similar to our first controller within the plants uh, but this is external to the unit so if you decide uh, you like the external versus the internal or you want to have both uh, then also we, uh, we uh, pre we provide that this is, has a lot of, it's a little bit different mechanism as far as activation and disactivation versus the internal unit. We also go a little bit farther on number three. Number three, the, we have a processor basically within uh, our external air gap uh, system, uh, which uh, we separate the, the, the right uh, the ports from the read ports. And then we, uh, there's a 16 uh, core processor uh, that monitors all the traffic coming to it. That uh, uh, it's a it's a the, the, it's a FPGA, which is basically it's a custom design chip that looks at all the traffic and basically um, monitors all the rights going to the to the our appliance, which is the air gap appliance. Um, and uh, then you know it makes it sort of a read only. Uh, type of uh, appliance and so we monitor the, the read as well so we make sure that we don't um, let anybody out there uh, you know get the data or information or anything about the appliance when it does read uh, so it's more sophisticated in the sense of uh, you know uh, you know examine every every communication comes to the appliance and be able to figure out what kind of protocol it is, what it is inside of it, how it works, how to restrict it, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you have that kind of usage for um, a very high-end uh, uh, you know, application also, that's available that uh, uh, we provide to customers. So as your needs uh, be, you know, requires even, you know, a very simple air gap or immutable storage, all the way to a uh, very sophisticated uh, implementation of air gap and uh, traffic controller or network controller. It's available um, uh, in this appliance. This appliance also have capability of DR and so it's uh, basically you can use Veeam and it would uh, you know uh, runs all the, your virtual machines. It depends on uh, your resources within this appliance. CPU and memory pretty much on this appliance uh, that uh, determines how much uh, you can actually run on this appliance. Uh, the, our controllers go anywhere from a four core controller all the way to 128 core controller. So it's, uh, it's pretty uh, powerful when you get to up to 128 uh, core controllers. And then uh, that means they can actually run you know, a few hundred machines on first, one, just one controller. The controller scales uh, and appliances they scale. Uh, they scale out from uh, the one single node up to 128 nodes. Uh, so if you look at it, it can, uh, you know, uh, process a lot of backups as far as terabytes. So it goes into petabytes. Yeah, each node, uh, you know, it starts from 20 terabyte and goes all the way to 1.5 petabyte. And um, as at that time, you know, you can also scale it out with nodes from one node to 128 nodes, and they create a single node because uh, they're a scale-out system, and so you never get stuck um, with uh, any kind of a scalability or high availability or redundancy or anything like that. So we don't like to say you, 
you know, or we like to say that you don't have forklift upgrade in these appliances because you buy partially populated and then you add more drives, you add more expansion, we call it a scale up, and then you can ask, also do a scale out uh, version of our appliance which goes up to 120. And all the air gap and everything else also applies to those. Each appliances have NVMe, comes with the appliance, there's two tier of NVMe. Uh, that speeds up everything that you see in this appliance. The first tier, uh, it's uh, hosts all our machines in there. The second tier is for caching and tiering, and so that speeds up your, uh, you know, processing uh, of uh, data and uh, backups. Uh, we also have the as far as performance tier SSDs uh, in this appliance and uh, hard drives, which are capacity tiers, are SAS drives, 7200 RPM. Uh, and there are 12 gigs, everything we use is the fastest bus, which is 12 gigs, and each uh, appliance is uh, controlled by uh, a RAID controller, for which it has a cache and battery backup um, in, in embedded into the controllers, and, um, so, and that uh, is, if you scale out with more than one node, we use erasure coding across it, and we can create multiple redundancy across nodes not only across uh, the, the node uh, itself uh, with the array control, but also erasure code and across the nodes. Uh, this appliance also have what's called sandbox system, so it creates a bubble network or proxy uh, network and then you know mimics all the addresses, so you can actually do it for testing, use it for testing your backup or uh, upgrade testing or data extraction, analytics, or anything you don't want to mess with your production, basically, so you can use that as part of this appliance and um, there, all the air gap and immunability also it's uh, you know you uh, you can basically you know if you decide to do uh, any kind of um, uh, you know analytics on them and later on if you are thinking of uh, you know uh, doing any kind of um, uh, basically testing on them those are also available because they are read only uh, and it's available to users. Uh, so, and the hypervisors that we support, if you decide to do DR, is a VMware or Hyper-V. And we also support Zen and KVM uh, as a general, if you decide to have a, a, a multi uh, kind of environment, you have Veeam and VMware or Hyper-V and all that kind of thing, Hyper-V and uh, the Veeam and uh, any, any other hypervisor we can support as far as DR. Uh, on the Veeam itself, we support uh, VMware and Hyper-V because that's what they uh, usually, uh, you know, uh, the systems are. And if you have mixed environment, then we can also support that. Um, well, thank you very much. I think if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. We'll be more than happy uh, to answer the questions. And uh, uh, these appliances, uh, as I said, they come anywhere from a four bay all the way to uh, 36 bay and go to the you know 90 bay uh, and then you can choose uh, whichever you want and implement um, the uh, backup and disaster recovery at any level you want so please talk to us and we'll be more than happy to uh, you know guide you through the configurations that you need